Marshal, I was just going to apply for a job. Sorry, son, but my deputy just went down there with all the men we need. Boys, get that man. I want him. Wait a minute. I'll get him. Watch this fella.
Well, Marshal, I guess you got me. But I wasn't mixed up in that gang. I was trying to help you. Why, you darn fool, I knowed it. I just wanted to talk to you when you lit out. I got a job for you. You need fighting fires and other. Say, I've been looking for a feller that can shoot and ride like you for months. Think I'm going to let you get away? Heh. <laughs> no, sir, Bob. Take a look at this. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, Mitty. Seems mighty funny to me that every time this gang organizes a rodeo, their own men win all the first prizes. When it begins to look like an outsider's going to win, he gets sick. Two or three has even died from it. You can't arrest him for that, Marshal. No, maybe not. But it's mighty peculiar that when these uh, outsiders fall off in them tough Bronx suffering from snake bite, eh, I tell you, it just ain't natural. What do you want me to do, get snake bit? No. Now, my idea is for you to trail over there and sign up for the rodeo. I'll come along after and do some private investigating while you work in with the gang. Of course, you don't have to know me when we get there. What do you say to that, son? Sounds great to me. When do we start? Right away. Fair enough. <laughs> this game is getting pretty hot for us. It's near time that the law figured out there's something crooked with this whole Rodeo business and starts investigating. Now, I've decided we'll make our next cleanup right here in Dalton and head for the border before something happens. We'll stick up the next stage from the mine, grab the Rodeo receipts, and clear out. You're right, Spike. They acted mighty suspicious when that fella died over in Boulder. When do we start? Tomorrow. The lawyers will board the stage down at Sagebrush and give you boys a high sign that the money's aboard. For the woman's passenger, the stage crew ain't liable to fight much anyhow. My new deputy, John Weston. Harry Weston? How do you do? Remember? I want you to paddle Weston over to the shortcut trail, the one that leads to Dalton. Save him a whole day's journey instead of going by the way of the desert and give him a horse. I'll see if there's another scent to you. Sure thing. You better get going then, right now. The trail starts right out there at the end of the corral, and you can't get off of it. Then you go 14 miles straight through the mountains, and it'll drop you right out of the timber on the main stage road that leads to Dalton.
Howdy, Miss Carter. Going home for the big roundup? Why, well, yes. I promised Dad I'd be there. I'll bet he'd be mighty glad to see you. Yeah, I'll be glad to see him, too. Pardon me. Uh, do you mind if I sit on this side? Why, no, certainly not. It's quite all right. We're getting some help from back there. Get out of Sure got us out of a jam that time, stranger. Nice riding. You don't happen to be going to the Dalton Rodeo, do you? Yes, I am. Well, tie your horse on behind and ride in with us. Thanks, I'll do that. Weston, ma'am. John Weston from Utah. I came over for the Rodeo. 
I saw your distress signal from the top of the ridge. When I saw those men riding by, I thought I'd better come down and investigate. My distress signal? It was mine. I saw the men come in and wait for help. Well, that's a kind of an unusual place to expect help, wasn't it? Why, uh, I, I saw you on the ridge. Oh, I see. Are you going to Dalton, ma'am? Yes. I'm Marjorie Carter. My father is Judge Carter, president of the Cattlemen's Bank in Dalton. I want you to meet him when we get there. You want to thank you, too. You see, the bank had a large shipment of money on this stage. Yeah, there was about 50 of them after it. But this fellow from Utah comes along single-handed and knocks them all off the horses. I never seen such rides. Can you tell me where I'll find Weston? Just went in the bank there, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Oh, hello, Miss Carter. Oh, this is Mr. Weston, the man who saved us from the bandits. Mr. Weston, my father, Judge Carter. Mighty fine piece of work, young man. I hope you're staying in Dalton. Yes, I'm going into the Rodale. That's fine. Drop into my office after you get settled. I'd like to have a talk with you. Thank you. I'd be glad to. You can't blame me if poor men couldn't take care of him. He's right. He just outsmarted you, that's all. I don't like the looks of it. He came up behind us and took the boys off of their horses. He say he will enter the Rodeo. We're going to have to take care of him. He's liable to spoil our plans. Hi, young man. Hello, Judge. Come in. Thank you. Miss Carter? How do you do? Sit down. As Justice of the Peace of this township, I've been doing a little investigating, and it appears to me that this Rodeo gang ain't just exactly on the level. If it ain't, we're going to need all the good men we can get on the side of law and order. Why, oh, it would be mighty disastrous, son, if anything happened to this Rodeo. Nearly all the money in this valley is tied up in it, so we've just got to keep it honest. You mean to say these people have tied up all the money in the valley on a proposition put on by outsiders? Yes, every cent. They think it'll bring people and prosperity to Dalton, and they're all mighty proud of this little valley. That's why I'm offering you the job of deputy sheriff. I figure that, that with a man like you representing us, they, they won't dare to pull any of their tricks. Well, I appreciate your confidence in me, Judge, but I couldn't accept. It would interfere with my plans. Plans? What plans? I, uh, my plans to enter the Rodale tomorrow. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry, young man. Well, so am I, Judge. Good day, Miss Carter. Good day. I'm afraid I was talking to the wrong man. Oh, I, I think he's nice. <laughs>
riding, roping, and horsemanship. Featuring dynamite, the only unridden horse on the range. Better be careful, son. A lot of men lost their lives mixing up with this gang. Oh, I don't think they'll try anything today. By tomorrow, I may have this thing figured out for you. I hope so. I still say you ought to be careful. The Trick Riders, ladies and gentlemen. Next on the program, ladies and gentlemen, will be the Trick Roping Contest, featuring Jack Hollister. Gentlemen, will be the Roman standing race. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we introduce that world renowned holder of the all round championship. Giant tent and the calf roping contest. Let her go. like a ringer to me. Yeah, we got to do something about it. Now, I don't want to pull anything too rough unless we have to. Gent, you take the boys up to the cabin and Dolores will get them up there. Just work over him gently. Enough so he'll be out of the running tomorrow. Well, leave that to us. Ready? 
Where do you live? stage is in with the gang. Better play up to her and see what you can find out. I'll meet you in the saloon tonight. yourself. Pour one. No thanks, I don't drink. Well, here's looking at you. Well, Weston, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. Now then, if you want to throw in with us. this and he'll be plenty sore. Say, Sheriff, a gang just jumped me up at the Spanish woman's house. And I got a hunch that if you go up there, you can pick up some of the gang that were mixed up in that stagecoach holdup yesterday. Yeah? Well, you don't look to me like you'd been in any fight. You don't get me out of here in no wild goose chase either. I'm staying right here to guard this money. Well, suit yourself. Oh, you talk. I got some prize money for you. Got a lot of money there, Judge. Yes, we're doing pretty well. Took in $8,000 today and expect more tomorrow. We'll have close to $30,000 in this bank by tomorrow night. $30,000? You're taking an awful chance, aren't you? I'm still guarding this bank, young fella. Oh, pardon me, Sheriff. Thanks, Judge. Hello, Miss Carter. Hey, buddy. Ain't you the young whippersnapper 
prizes that won most of them events out there today? Oh, I won a prize or two. Sit down. Hey, you look like a young fellow that won the belt, Cheyenne, last summer. No, that was my granddad. I've been nosing around. Appears to me like we'll have to get to this fellow Barton. After what you've done today, he'll probably be glad to know you. Go up to the bar and make a bet on yourself. You look you up. Oh, I see. You can't fix them, I'll have to buy them off. Since your brawn won't work, I'll use my brain. That bird has put it over on you twice. Fine bunch you are. This Utah bird's out there. He just came in. Fine. I'll take care of him right now. What will it be? Just want to place a bet. A thousand dollars on Weston to win. He's a one to two favorite. That's right. But it's an easy 500. Beg pardon. You're Weston, aren't you? My name's Barton. I'm head of the Rodeo Committee. I'd like to talk to you privately. Certainly, Barton. I want to apologize for that little altercation some of my boys had with you. They thought you were somebody else. They found out their mistake, and they're sure sorry. I'd like to have you meet him. Fact is, I'd like to have you join up with us, Weston. You'll never get into the big money in this game unless you play with a gang. I guess you know what I mean. Well, it sounds good to me. I've always heard you had to be on the inside to be anything. What's your proposition? Just this. Right now, you're a one to two favorite. That means you're going to win on a $1,000 bet, $500. Thing for you to do is to let me place 2,000 for you on Kent at 2 to 1. And uh, if you should be off form tomorrow and Kent wins, you stand to make $4,000. Now that's a lot better than $500, isn't it? Well, I'm afraid you're right. That's fine. I'm glad you see it our way. Come in the back room. I want you to meet some of the boys. Weston here is going to join up with us. I want you all to treat him right. Weston, meet Cheyenne Kent. Yeah, I think we met before. Oh, Senor Weston. We will see a lot of each other now that we are friends, see? I'm kind of green at this uh, racket. I, I suppose there's a lot of things about the Rodeo business you could tell me. Oh, boys, see you later. So long, Martin. So long. Well, we'll just make that 2,000 on Weston. All right. See, boys, it just takes a little brains to handle a guy like that. Yeah, well, how do you know he won't cross us up? Well, if he does, we can still give him the needle. We're clearing out after this haul, anyhow. How'd you make out, son? You had the right hunch, Marshal. This promoter Barton is the brains of the gang, all right. I placed that bet like you told me, and... He made me a proposition to join the outfit. Did you accept? Sure, I accepted. He took me right in and introduced me to the rest of the gang. I met them all. Barton told me that he'd placed a $2,000 bet on Cheyenne Kent for me. And that if I should lose the events that I was entered in, why, I'd stand to win $4,000. So I don't think we have much to worry about from them until I start winning. And then maybe it'll be too late for them to get organized. Well, I don't know, son. Strikes me you better be mighty careful. Remember what happened to them other fellas. This gang's a tough bunch when somebody crosses them. I don't want to see you took down with snake bite. Did you, did you get anything out of that Spanish woman? No, she wouldn't talk much. She took me up to that shack on the hill and introduced me to Cheyenne Kent. She said he was her brother. 
But before I could get either one of them to spill anything, the whole gang jumped me, and I had to carve myself a fast walking stick. I didn't get you into this job to get yourself killed. You got any ideas how they work this snake bite proposition? Not yet, but figuring from past performances, they can't do much till that bronc riding. That's one of the last events tomorrow. So I haven't to lend to figure it out. And besides, it's going to take them some time to get wise that I'm not going to lose this Rodeo. Son, never forgive myself if anything happens to you. Oh, uh, nothing's going to happen. Come on, let's turn in. Good day. Tomorrow's a big day. certain, but I got a good hunch. And you hadn't ought to take any chances. Well, that's the only way to get their dope on. Say, have you got that snake bite medicine? Sure. Never will <laughs> That's what I thought. Here, take this outfit with the needle. What are you thinking about, son? Old timer, I think I got this thing figured out. Come on, I'm in the next event. Next is the bulldogging, ladies and gentlemen. Watch closely. This is going to be good. Is next up. I've got to leave, Marjorie. 
The receipts are in by now. I got to check them over and put them in the vault. All right, Dad. I'll be in later. Me, boys. It's all yours. Maybe I better just give him the once over myself to make sure. Well, you'll find everything all right. Ladies and gentlemen, a man from Utah will try his luck on dynamite. Right him, cowboy. Right up there, Weston. Just a minute. Why? He found the needle we planted for him, and now he's riding the bronc. We've got to get moving. We clean out the bank and get over the line. What about me? That's for you to figure out.
Put up your hand. Why, Sheriff, I... Robbery and murder, eh? Well, you didn't get away with it. I thought you acted kind of suspicious last night when you were looking over that money and tried to get me out of there. But, Sheriff, Save I... your breath, young fella. You Just are. Just a minute, Sheriff. I'm a United States Marshal. That young fellow's working for me. We're after a gang of rodeo crooks, and you almost let the biggest one get away. Now I got an organized a posse and go after him. Nice work, son. Come on, boys. Take him out. Boy, you got him red-handed. Yes, and that's not all. Here's enough evidence to send that gang up for murder. Whenever anyone interfered with their Rodale plans, they stuck one of these needles dipped in snake venom in the saddle. And if the man died, why, they couldn't prove anything on them. I know there was a mystery about this, Summers. By cracky, it took you to figure it out. Well, you see, Miss Marjorie, it's like this. He had to play up to that gal so he could get in with the gang. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll have to forgive him. Say, young fella, how about that deputy sheriff job? Sorry, Judge, but I can't accept. They'd interfere with my plans. Plans? What are you planning now? Well, Dad, you see, he's promised to stay away from these beautiful senoritas, and we've got to plan our... Our honeymoon. Well. So long, Judge. 